Hello and welcome back. My name is Dara and in this video I'm showing you how I made this gorgeous cream arrangement. All the tools and the flower recipe to make this design is linked below in the description box. We've got, as usual, the three quarter inch felt pads and I secure those on with Loctite gel super glue. And then I go in with galvanized chicken wire. It's important to use galvanized because if you don't, the chicken wire will rust and it tends to make a very unsightly looking water situation. So highly recommend galvanized. I have a couple of different types linked there in my store. This one is for this particular design. I think the perfect amount of space in between each little honeycomb separation there. So I secure that over top with quarter inch Oasis waterproof tape and then also make sure to secure that on the upper lip of the vase so that no water gets in there and once I've done that I just go ahead with my fingers and reinforce over that because if water does get in it will lift it up and it's okay if a little bit gets in there but it can be it can cause an issue. I always sharpen my tool first before I go in. It just creates for a much more effortless design process. You'd be amazed at how just a couple of strokes on that little knife sharpener really does help with your design process. It just makes it a whole lot easier. So the first element I'm going in with is lemon geranium. This is a highly fragrant geranium. I love the texture of this geranium. And then we've got white rice flour, gorgeous. I take off all of the laterals to get up to kind of like a top tuft there. Then I set those laterals aside. And after I plug in with most of my larger pieces, I then fill in down towards the rim of the vase. Yep, so now we've got cream stock. These were cute little flower heads, little florets. I really liked this smaller variety. Usually they are a lot more big and juicy, which would have been too much for this design. This was actually a bereavement slash condolence arrangement. So instead of just doing a stark all white arrangement, I thought it would be really lovely to add in cream. And so this arrangement is kind of that overall cream arrangement. Stunning peonies. And what I'm doing here is fluffing that flower out. If you don't have the time to let the flower open out, if you buy them at the right openness stage, which is like this kind of golf ball size, you will be able to kind of ruffle them depending on how loose they are. And that really does help to open them out. So again, just fluffing, creating the overall shape that the peony is going to open out into once it does fully open and then giving that a nice fresh cut, of course, at the end of the stem at an angle and also taking off any nodes that are sticking out on that stem because when we do this, when we take off the nodes on the stem, it allows for a much easier insertion as well as if you need to change the placement of the flower, it also tends to come out a lot more easily that way too. Gorgeous ranunculus very precious flower for this design. One of my favorite spring flowers and I love the assortment of colors that it comes in and of course this off-white color was perfect for this arrangement. When I'm designing these types of arrangements I'm typically going for a highly textural look. I want it to feel at once traditional and classic, but also with the silhouette of the, the arrangement feel at the same time highly contemporary. So the way I've explained this in other videos is that basically I'm thinking like a couturier and one of the designers that I reference a lot is Givenchy. There are these gorgeous, highly textural beaded gowns and pieces that then have a very 
minimalist, clean silhouette. So I tend to use that principle in designing this arrangement. So I look for flowers that have a ton of texture that are also in a range from premium to common everyday flowers. So then I'm able to use a lot more. If I mix in premium as well as maybe slightly more conventional or affordable flowers, you get a lot more. You get more texture, you get more for the budget, and you get a larger arrangement if that is your goal. I just think it's, for me, the best way to design. I feel like I've honed this particular style of arranging over the years. Uh, this is a stunning Matsumoto Aster. And what I did also with that was take off the individual laterals. Usually these flowers do have long enough laterals for a medium to large size arrangement to take off and use as individual flowers. This rose, absolutely stunning, called Candlelight, playing off of that cream color and it perfectly matched that stock there. And then just going off and taking off any of the damaged guard petals. If you're going for a little bit more of a rough or rustic look, you might want to leave those on. This is completely up to your discretion. But because I am going for a little bit more of a contemporary look, I always tend to clean those off. If I were doing a larger installation piece that was perhaps a little bit more rough around the edges, I might opt to leave some of those calyx on. Sometimes it can look really rustic, country, it's gorgeous, exquisite. Spray garden rose with a fragrance, <laughs> as you can see here. Oh my God, the fragrance on these were just hypnotic. I can't even describe what that fragrance is, but it's just divine. So same principle, stripping off all of the greenery. The greenery do not contribute to this arrangement. I started the arrangement with the greenery and now I'm plugging in with all of my white flowers. So taking off all of that foliage and then also taking off any damaged calyx or outer petals that is really getting down to just the concentrated cream part of this flower, which makes it, again, look very contemporary, clean, and refined. Oh, I really enjoyed making this arrangement. It is a large arrangement. At completion, it was about 23 or so inches tall by about 27 inches wide quite large, in my opinion, for such a dense arrangement and was the perfect bereavement arrangement. So like I did with the Matsumoto Aster, I'm also taking those lateral pieces. When there's too many stems on one stem, or too many laterals on one stem, I should say, I tend to take those off and again, use those down low so that I'm then getting the look of the flower at all angles. This is kind of a fanned out cylinder shape, which is my preferred style. I like that the arrangement is not a perfectly complete sphere. It has a slightly kind of oval or oblong shape to it so that you kind of get a front and a back and then the sides are just slightly narrowed in. This also kind of took me a long while to kind of get to this type of shape as my signature shape, if you will. Using the classic carnation, and now we also have this precious cornflower. This was a very, that's a very delicate stem and considering we already have most of the flowers placed into this arrangement now, um, because it's delicate but also very slender, it was very easy to get in there as a finishing flower. This ended up being a very fragrant arrangement. We have the peonies, carnation, those epic spray garden roses, and even the candlelight roses had a lovely fragrance to them. They kind of have this if you've been a florist for a while now, you might know what I'm saying here by saying that it has a standardized rose scent to it. 
It's lovely, but it's not an authentic garden rose. It's almost like this hybridized scent. I don't know how they did that. But then we also have the stock and the lemon geranium. So overall, very fragrant arrangement. And I finish that with finishing touch, give it a vigorous shake and spray generously all over. And then we have it. This was the gorgeous cream arrangement for a bereavement. As always, all of the tools and the recipe is linked below in the description box. Thank you so much for watching.